Hello everyone and welcome to another Fun Knife Friday. Wow, do I have a treat for everyone here today. I just received in the mail this pocket knife that was made by, or a replica of a Union Knife Company knife made in Connecticut and it says here that Union Knife was established in 1851. What makes this special is the knife is a replica of uh, the Union Knife that was sold during the Civil War and many, many Civil War soldiers carried this knife in their pocket. This is a reproduction of the actual packaging uh, that Union Knife Company wrapped the knives in. So if you were living in 1861 or two or three or somewhere in there, you're fighting in the war and you purchased one of their knives, this is, uh, well, this is how it would come packaged. What I'm going to try to do is open it across the back so I can save this packaging. I don't want to cut through the label, I want to save the label. So I will be back in just a moment and we're going to take a look at this knife. Okay, I was uh, able to successfully cut across the back of the pack packaging and I still have not seen the knife yet. I thought we'd all look at it together. So here it is. Look at that knife. That is awesome looking already. Has a half stop. Wow. Nice snap to it. It's got your basic uh, wood covers here. Um, looks like some sort of uh, just steel pins here and a steel bolster. So apparently, or what they claim is these are exact reproductions so they use just regular steel there for the bolsters and for the pins but look at that knife it needs to get broke in just a little bit it needs probably a little bit of oil steel liners a little bit of gapping there but you know what that's probably how they came and like they said it's a reproduction so now the tang stamp is very light in there. I can't even read it from behind the or through the camera, so hold on just a second. Okay, getting in a, a little better light. I could read it there. It says Union Knife Company, and you'll see that the tang stamp is very light. And an explanation on the website says that uh, you know these were hand stamped. Sometimes you'd only get half the tang stamp in there. And they weren't nice, crisp machine stamps uh, most of the time like we see today. You can see the blade, a nice spear point blade, but you can see it's not shined up to an ultra polish. And I doubt that those were back then either. They were trying to pump these out just as fast as they could. But it is still a wonderful knife. I am so happy I was able to get this. Okay, I just went and put a little oil on there and just did a little bit of light cleaning on it. Got some gunk out of there. It's starting to get some uh, really good walk and talk to it. I'm sure if I work with it a little more, why it'll get a little bit more smooth. Now, I would be tempted to do a review here and do it in the normal way using today's standards and today's precision machining and so on and such forth, but... I can't do that. As you can see, this is not a showpiece. There's a little gap here in this bolster. Um, you know, you can feel the liners there just a little bit, kind of sharp just a little bit. Um, it, there's definitely some crudeness here. Definitely some crudeness. You know, like I said, the blade is not all nice and, and uh, mirror polished or anything like that. But that's okay. It's still a nice spear point blade. It is still a very functional and I'm sure a very useful pocket knife. I do like the half stop in there. I thought just for some kicks and grins we'd uh, weigh it and just see what it weighs here. And it comes in at 2.5 ounces so not super heavy. And this kind of, while well, I'm on that and I'm talking about weight, we, we think of uh, the soldiers there carrying the big, uh, well, in the Confederacy, they had the big D-ring knives. 
and we think of soldiers, you know, carrying the big Bowie knives and that. Um, maybe at the beginning of the war, you know, a lot of them did, but uh, it seems like as the war went on, they, they relied just on a pocket knife, something like this. You got to remember all the things that they were carrying and all the weight that they were carrying as they marched. And they had all kinds of stuff on their belt already. So I think, uh, you know, the, the buoy knife kind of went away and, and they just favored just a pocket knife. Let's uh, just check the length here real quick if we can. And we got an overall length of about 8 inches. And it looks like about 3 and a quarter inches or so of uh, cutting blade, cutting edge. Uh, also on the website, they address the uh, the nail nick, and again, you can see it's not as finely, uh, I don't know how to ground, ground out how they put nail nicks in, but uh, it looks a little cruder than normal. But anyway, they were saying on the website that someone was saying that this wasn't an authentic reproduction because it had a nail nick, and nail nicks didn't exist back in that time. Well, um... The website says that's balderdash. It not maybe not all knives had nail nicks back then, but certainly some of them did have nail nicks. So they are standing behind uh, their reproduction of this knife. Purchased this knife from uh, the sutler of Fort Scott, and they do a lot of uh, reproduction uh, type Civil War type reproductions. Um, let me see here. I, yeah, I paid sixteen ninety five. For the knife and of course there was shipping on top of that so not a bad price for the knife uh, looks like the edge could be uh, touched up on it just a little bit it's not the best ground edge and i want to keep uh, repeating this we cannot you know use today's standards when we're reviewing something like this as i said they you know all these companies were just pumping this these knives out just as fast as they could they couldn't meet up with the demand so yeah, they're going to be, they're not going to have the fit and finish that we expect today. But it did not take away from their usefulness. So just to wrap it up, here's a look at a reproduction of a single blade jackknife from the Civil War era. And I'm in love with it. I plan on trying to find some other reproduction knives from that era. It's awful difficult. Uh, they get mighty pricey if you're trying to buy, you know, actual originals from the period. But uh, to get some nice reproductions like this, I think I'll try to start adding these to my collection also. So until next time, everyone have a very delightful day. And if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see some more of my content, why, please hit the like button and that subscribe button. Take it easy.